DIY horde. So today's DIY was originally going to be uh, much cutesier, but then I realized it's October. Screw that. We're going Halloween-y with it. Uh, so today we're going to be making cross-stitched lapel pins. They're going to pin here and here. Uh, and they are going to be little bat wings. We are going to be cross-stitching this on plastic canvas. So you are going to need plastic canvas. Uh, you can see that I already made my first wing. Um, and I will link to this pattern. Uh, it is on the uh, candypatterns.com. I cannot pronounce this uh, screen name, but there it is. And that is the pattern I have printed out and will be using. I have also, uh, we will specifically be using, I am specifically using DMC thread, uh, 310, which is their black, and I will also be using uh, 415 and 414 as my grays, in case you want to use the exact colors I am using. We are also going to need some chain, because we are going to connect these. We're going to need some pliers to pull that chain apart. You're going to need some pin backs and then some glue to glue those pin backs onto your wings. Today I'm going to try to use my, um, it has labeled bad because this is the one that doesn't dry clear because it, uh, it works as a glue, but it doesn't, it doesn't work for rhinestoning, and that's why it's the bad one, but it should work for this. I'm testing it out for the first time. In the past, I have used super glue, but I always, always, always get super glue on my fingers. You guys can um, flash back to that time I made an ironing board and tried to super glue my fingers together. So yeah, I'm, I'm trying out a different glue, um, but I, I would heavily suggest... And I would heavily suggest not using hot glue, because sometimes the pin backs pop... Pot really just pop away from the hot glue. Um, but just a, just a nice sturdy glue. Aliens Tacky probably works too. Um, and that is our supply list. Uh, so we are, we are gonna move down to the table and start working. So I've already done a more intense beginner's tutorial uh, in my cross-stitched Game Boy bow DIY. Uh, so I'm not going to go as in-depth today, but I am going to go through the basic steps. Um, uh, the important thing to remember about today's project is that you want a left wing and a right wing. So don't just copy the same thing twice, like I already have one wing. So I'm going to do the mirrored image, and I'm actually going to start so that I can fit these on properly. I'm actually going to start upside down from the way I started this one because I worked I worked this one from the tip of the wing to there. But I believe I can actually space them close enough and save more of my canvas if I just start upside down on this one because then I can start at these points that are the points that would touch and build out. So to cut these out I actually want the the hole, the lane of holes that's between them to remain open. So I would actually start my stitch two over from where that is. And this is this right here on the pattern and here on the piece is where they're going to be the closest. So I'm actually going to go one row up from there and count my one, two stitches over to start that top row. we should be good to continue on as normal from there. And I'm doing this just like I did the Game Boy. I'm going color by color. I'm just doing row by row here. This first row is two stitches of black. And 
and then on our next row and this is a little hard to see in my black and white printout but that's also why I'm doing it next to my color I would usually uh, just actually do this just looking at the computer uh, but given setting up this this technique here of filming uh, it's not really great and I don't uh, don't want to do it with my phone right now, uh, but you could also use your phone or a tablet device. But my tablet is so ancient it will not access Pinterest. Um, <laughs> that's a fun one for you. Uh, but on this next row here, we have one black on the outside of each of those two stitches in the first. This is the true test. If I screwed this up, I'll be able to tell right here, but I did not. I'm going to finish the crosses here. I'm just going to try to show you up close real quick that those are one whole row apart so when I go to cut them apart I can just slice right down that row. Now the important thing to remember here if you're looking at if you've already completed one and you're you're looking at your other one do remember you have to mirror it. But I suggest since this pattern so nicely already came with right and left, just pay attention to the pattern. <laughs> Okay, and now that we have our whole outline done, what I like to do is move to the next least used color, which is going to be our dark gray, which is that DMC 414. And the fun thing about this pattern, uh, this color for this pattern, is it pretty much just runs along that uh, wrong edge, that upper edge of the wing there. So it's actually pretty, uh, pretty easy and quick here. have that done, everything left just needs to be filled in with our light gray, which is our DMC 415. And you can actually pretty much ignore your pattern at this point because everything that's empty just needs to be gray.
All right, now that we're all done with the cross stitching, we're ready to cut these out and seal the backs and start actually making them into pins. When I did the materials list at the beginning of the video, I did forget to say that I will be using Mod Podge. And I like to use this just to seal up the back so that all everything is just sort of nice and glued down and won't come apart. But before we get to that, I am going to use an X-Acto. Please, you can actually do this step with scissors. And if by some chance there is someone who is not of an age or confidence level to be using X-Actos watching this video, uh, you do not have to use an X-Acto. If you are not responsibly old enough to be using it, please don't use it. You can do this with scissors. I like to use an X-Acto because it feels more ha <laughs> exact um, for me, uh, but you're just going to cut out, and we did do this before with the, the Game Boy, you're going to go around, sorry there's something on my X-Acto knife, you're going to go around and just slice through the plastic canvas. as close as close fitting to your image there this is more complex than the Game Boy was uh, so not so much just a solid rectangle so you do have to pay attention and follow your lines really closely We're just going to cut these out one at a time. idea what they're doing outside my apartment but there might be um, some noises going on uh, hopefully my mic isn't good enough for you guys to pick up on what's going on out there um, but I am gonna have to struggle through and um, so we have we have our little our cute little bat wings all all made up all cut out uh, in there <laughs> so creepy cute and we are going to turn those over and throw a dash of Mod Podge on them just to seal and then we're going to have to wait for that to dry. And I just like to use this as an opportunity to get any wayward ends packed down, glued down so that they don't both so that they don't unravel and so that they don't stick out to the front side. And yes, this is gloss Mod Podge, which uh, is wholly unnecessary because we don't need a gloss finish on the back of a cross stitch project. Uh, but it is what I have. Actually, I do have some fabric Mod Podge somewhere too, but it's just... My gloss Mod Podge is always out, so I pretty much just use it for just about everything because I just always have it. Alright, then we're going to have to leave those to dry. Alright, with the Mod Podge dry, the next step is going to be to attach your pin backs. And these are, you can find these in the jewelry aisle at uh, pretty much any craft store. Guess I accidentally picked up two different ones. <laughs> you see that? <laughs> That's funny. Uh, it literally doesn't matter. So, with the gem tack, the thing that is going to help this stay on is we want to put like more glue than you would think you would need because you want it to come up over the edges of the pins here.
So I'm just going to put a whole ton of glue there. Yeah, that whole splat is just gonna hopefully have curled up around and cupped the pin backing. That will be what helps keep that on. gotten them roughly centered and then uh, we wait forever for that to dry. While those pins are drying I'm actually gonna start on the connective chain that I want to go between them. I'm just visually measuring this um, unfortunately this is off-camera between the points of my lapels where I want the pins to sit and where I want the chain to sit. I've decided this this is the link I'm going to crack open. So we're going to find the opening that's on this side of this link. And I'm going to hold it with my needle nose because I grabbed those first and I'm gonna pull it open using the flat nosed or not. Actually I'm gonna go the other way around. I'm gonna go ahead and try to hold it steady with the flat and try to move it with the needle or just whatever ends up working today. There we go. And just lift that off. These aren't completely dry, uh, but they are pretty, pretty solidly uh, on there. So I'm going to continue. So I only have so much time today. Why did I pick a project with uh, big globs of glue? I don't know, but... <laughs> This is how we're doing things today. Alright, we're just going to close that link up there. And go to the other side and open that link so we can get it onto our little wingy. And you just want to make sure you get it onto the same part, just that bottom little corner there. actually is the completed pin set and here we are and of course you can make your chain longer or shorter to taste you can also use this technique with any small pattern uh, you're gonna want to use something sort of smaller you could go bigger than this uh, depending on again preference but anything that sort of fits in this space is that size you could do anything and just put those pin backs on it slap a chain through it and you have just a cute little piece of accent jewelry and with that i will see you treasures next time <laughs>